Well, um, I'm Sarah Gordon. I am the curator at the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. And I've had the great pleasure of working with Emmanuel throughout the process of developing this exhibition, which has been really exciting. So on behalf of the commission, I just wanna, I wanna congratulate Emmanuel and the 14 artists who are featured in this exhibition, including Lloyd, um, on opening this show. This, Through Our Eyes, is the second exhibition funded by our art exhibition or curatorial grant that due to COVID has been presented in this customized virtual gallery space um, designed to the specs of our 200 I Street galleries. And so again, congratulations to Emmanuel and some of our other curators for working seamlessly and quickly and with so much flexibility to pivot to this online platform. I think that artists and curators have been doing an amazing job of adapting to our current um, situation. Um, I do wanna briefly mention the other grants that the commission offers for, for visual artists. Um, we have the Art Bank grant, which is a, pro a process by which we acquire work for our Art Bank collection. And we also offer an Arts and Humanities Fellowship Program, just which is basic um, financial support for artists. The season when the applications open is typically in the spring, so keep your eyes open when that rolls around. Um, if you do want to get on our mailing list so that you can be notified of these, you can visit dcarts.dc.gov, and I'll put that in the chat. Um, you know, the exhibition was delayed um, because of COVID from originally uh, being planned to open in the spring. And because of that, a lot of the arts, uh, artwork that was initially uh, proposed to be in the exhibition have been replaced because they were not available, they were stuck in galleries and studios. Um, and I want to note that and also say that I think that the exhibition, because of that, is even more timely and even more powerful than what Emmanuel had initially proposed. Um, as, as is noted in the exhibition text, a lot of the pieces on view um, address issues around black identity in America today, and also about the current challenges of COVID. And um, the artwork is just, it's visually arresting, it's technically impressive, and it really speaks to this moment in time. So to Emmanuel, to Lloyd, to the other artists who are in the exhibition, thank you for allowing us to see today's world through your eyes. And I will turn it over to Emmanuel and Lloyd. Okay, I can, uh, Lloyd, before you start, you want me to read your uh, artist bio? Sure, yeah. Okay, this is an artist bio for Lloyd. Lloyd Foster is a Ghanaian American photographer based in Brooklyn, New York, self-taught. Foster's work uses personal connections, memories, and authentic perception to capture daily life combat warp media perspectives and uh, bet tier understanding um, his subjects. Uh, Foster's works have been exhibited in the National Geographic Museum, BWI Airport Art Gallery, the Textile Museum, the Prince George's um, County uh, African American Museum, the IA and A at Hillier, among other exhibition spaces within the United States. Uh, Foster is currently a graduate student at the New York University pursuing an MFA in studio art. Yeah, Thank so that's just a little bit about um, uh, Lloyd's background. Um, yeah, so you can, uh, you want to start off with the PowerPoint? I, I can start with asking you a question, you know. Uh, yeah, sure. How are you promoting up with uh, being an artist during the COVID-19 pandemic? Like, how's it been for you? What are some challenges, benefits? Yeah, I'm um, just taking it day by day. Um, I guess the challenges would be, like, at the moment, I'm not working in a studio um, until I get back up to school, so I just kind of been working on other things really um but still art related and doing a lot of reading as well but just trying to keep myself educated uh, but some of the benefits i would say um it's brought me closer to uh, family you know just being back right now at the moment i'm uh, actually at my parents house so i'm just you know just kind of just being acclimated again with my uh folks so that's been good I think there is like a lot of good that's come out of it as well yeah I know that I know that feeling too just moving around being close to your family studio space is funny right now and just you know a, a whole bunch of you know stuff there's some good stuff too there's a lot of artists relief grants have been going around um yeah so every, every artist I've talked to has had a different perspective about COVID good yeah. and negative so um did you want to uh, start with the uh, PowerPoint yeah, yeah, I'll start with the PowerPoint. Let me get this 
Oh, actually, I think you may have to. It says, or if you can, um, you can't share your screen. No, not at the moment. I think you may have to change it on the um right. Let me look. Let me see if I can let me see. Uh, uh technology. This is this view only. Yeah, the PowerPoint you sent me it only says uh, I can only view. Right. Um, yeah. which you should. Oh, you know, I could present it. Let me see. I could present it. Let me look. Yeah, but I don't know if I would be able to. Um, yeah, I don't think you'll be able to control it. I probably have to. Right. Um, if you want to switch me to a host, or I believe at the bottom right of the screen, there should be an option to enable um, panelists. Let's look. Cause I, oh, I'm the host. Okay, let me see. Chat for like make host. I could just make you the host. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. All right. There you go. All right. Awesome. All right. All right. So um, thank you everyone for joining at the moment. Thank you, Emmanuel, for curating this exhibit. Thank you for uh, the DC Commission of Arts and Humanities for um, I guess allowing us to take part. Uh, yeah, so like you said earlier, my name is Lloyd. I'm a Ghanaian American artist. Um, currently right now I'm based in DC, but um, I've been attending school at NYU this past year, and I primarily work with 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 photos, but I've been experimenting as well. So I'm just going to kind of take you guys through uh, my art practice, and starting off um, in the beginning, kind of like where I got started with some of my inspirations, and then we're going to go into like some of my early work in DC and follow up with um, some of the work that I've also done abroad in Ghana, Tanzania and um, Sierra Leone as well. And before that, of course, the work in the exhibition. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna start. This is the first slide right here. It's not a photograph that I took, um, but it's actually my mother. So my mom, um, she was the very first person to give me uh, disposable, two disposable cameras when I was 12. Um, she gave me two disposable cameras to take the Disney World with uh, my two cousins and like little 12 year old me, um, I tried to the best of my ability to document my experience. Um, but I ended up, which I did, I did. But uh, when I came home from Disney World, I ended up losing those two cameras. Um, but in looking for them in like storage crates for many years, but um, I guess something, just looking back at this, this presentably looks like a, a a portrait of my mother in the studio and my mom's not here anymore but looking looking at this image which i found more recently i think about oops <laughs> i think about um what my mom's relationship was was with photography and i think it's also interesting because i'm now also a lot of my work is heavily inspired um in ghana or africa more so so I like this image and I just figured I have to share this. So definitely a shout out to a uh, mom, shout out to all the moms out there. All right, so the next slide, this is, uh, this is an ID card of mine at Target. So when I was, um, I would say about like 2010, <laughs> I worked at Target. And um, at the time I was attending a university in Pennsylvania, a small college uh, called St. Francis. And I didn't really love it at all, but uh, you know, it was what it was. What it was. But on the on the uh, during during va during vacation, so like winter break and also summer vacations, I would come back to the DMV and I would work at Target. So one summer, I decided to save up and purchase a DSLR, and that was like a big step for me, like purchasing a camera. So I decided, let me show that to you all right here. Um, so this was me around circa 2010 at Target. <laughs> this is when I first decided to buy a camera. Um, this is an early portrait of a friend of mine. His name is Kelly. And this is also um, probably one of the earlier first portraits that I ever took with a film camera. Um, and I put this on here because Kelly uh, is kind of instrumental in my photographic journey as well. Um, because there was a time where 
I didn't really consider myself a photographer, but it's rather just a person who had a camera a person that takes photos. Uh, but I was talking to Kelly on the train one time and he told me, he's like, yo, like you take photographs with film, you uh, look at photography websites all the time. You literally um, take photographs of people in train cars. At the moment, at that time, I was like going from train car to train car in DC and just kind of just photographing people at random. So he was like, yeah, like you're a photographer. So I think at that moment, I started embracing it. Uh, this is, so what I'm gonna show you guys now is some work from DC or maybe about uh, 2013 or so to 2015 after I had graduated college. And this was a portrait that I took around the Shaw area of a young man and his daughter. He had his daughter on top of him, on his on his neck, and I thought it was pretty interesting. I um, just thought it was a very beautiful moment. So I took that image of him and I later um, gifted it to him, like a print a little bit later. These were some images that I took around uh, 2015 it was for a series called actually I'm not even sure the name of the series but it was it was I know it was for a friend uh, who had a magazine at the time um, called District Magazine her name is Ayana Zair and what she wanted me to do at the time she wanted me essentially to take portraits of black people in DC and that was it that was what she wanted me to do so um, at the time I was working um, an IT job actually in Virginia. I was working at George Mason and like anytime after or before work, I'd try to try my best to take portraits essentially. So this was, I believe maybe after work, but this was the father in the middle and his two children left and right of him. And I'm gonna show you a couple more images from this series. Um, this was an image, this is actually the, uh, one of my images that was in the National Geographic Museum um, some years back and I took this in the morning and I kind of gravitated to him because of his just like facial structure and I was definitely a little bit nervous like asking at first but um, I'm really happy I got the image and he was, and we, we conversed, um, cool dude. I got a quick question. Yeah. Um, so when you uh, see people in the street, like what gravitates you to a certain person? Like right. when you see them, like, is it like, you know, is it like, I see the very, they're like almost like paintings. They're very structural. Mm -hmm. They're very like well thought out compositions. You know, it doesn't seem like you're just taking pictures. It seems like they're right. almost like painting. So like, like, what do you see when you see a person? How do you set it up? You talk a little bit more about your process. Yeah, yeah, so I don't, I don't so much, uh, or more recent, like as of recent, I don't really um, approach people as much as I used to, just like on the street, I would say. But in this in this particular situation, I think it's there's always something that I'm sort of drawn to at like a split of a second or so, and it just kind of comes to me. Um, also, I would say that I do enjoy, which you'll see in some of my later works, I do enjoy a lot of work related to like, kind of just like mother, daughter, father, daughter, or father, you know, that type of relationship. And I think that's also kind of stemming back to my relationship with my mom and um, kind of thinking back about some of those moments um, in my life and kind of um, seeking it through other people that I photograph essentially. So, yeah. And this, these were also for the series. I took the one on the left around Shaw and uh, the one on the right was around the Columbia Heights area. And took, um, yeah, took the image on the left around the Gallery Place Chinatown area. And that's an artist, um, a DC artist as well, Chaz French, and then on the right, the portrait of the young lady. I took, um, I took this one in around uh, around Seventh Street, around Seventh Street. And these and these were actually also around Seventh Street. And uh, again, um, there was I think there was a period where I was definitely um, just interested in taking portraits of like young 
black fathers in DC. Um, like myself, I'm not a father, but um, I just, I think it was just kind of stemmed around um, just thinking about some stereotypes that have um, kind of been bestilled at times and, and just really kind of highlighting, um, highlighting them through some of my photographs. And this was taken outside of the Shaw Metro. Uh, this is a portrait of a friend of mine's Handy. And she's also an artist and curator. And I took this portrait of her and her best friend. I like this one a lot. Uh, even though you're not able to see her friend in this, but I kind of get the idea that they're kind of one, they're connected, they're joined together. So I like this one. Um, and then the next slide is also kind of related to Handy, but this is her, these are actually like her family members essentially. So there was a time I was like in a creative like rut and I just asked her like, hey, can I photograph you and your family? So this is like her two sisters and her mother. And I just really like this. I think this is an image that they'll appreciate uh, many years later. And, and also, yeah, just family portraits. I really do enjoy family portraits because uh yeah they're they're like time stamps of you know family members together i think even thinking myself like an actual family family portrait it's probably been many years that I've, since I've, I've taken one like in the studio or something like that and this is again her two sisters i'm um, just holding hands little sis um kind of making a i don't want to say a gesture but her feet her kind of um kind of shows her expression in a way and they're holding hands together um yeah they're sisters and i think they'll appreciate this and also the backdrop um i'm very big on just like kind of working with like whatever you have but that's just i think at the time that was just like a bed sheet that i used um yeah and this is an image of the old ghana cafe it's really just a, a snapshot, but it's not it's not here anymore. Um, but I just added it in here. I thought it was interesting as a Ghanaian, also thinking that um, there was like a physical space at one time where people in the diaspora could also um, go and enjoy some of the home cuisine. And there is, I think there there actually is still um, another Ghanaian restaurant around the Ustery area. Uh, these two images. So the one on the left is a lady holding up a uh, Street Sense magazine. And Street Sense magazine is, I mean, or not magazine, Street Sense, uh, like newspaper. It's a newspaper made uh, by homeless people. So kind of you know, putting their stories uh, straight up within the paper for people to grasp that. And that was taken around the Farragut Metro. And on the right, you have uh, actual homeless people uh, sleeping in, in Gallery Place, Chinatown. And I think, um, you know, DC does have a, a very heavy um, homelessness issue, I think, um, with a lot of people being pushed out in um, recent years. But this was even actually in, uh, I think, around 2013 or 2014. But it's something that caught my eye at the time, um, yeah. And then this also, again, this is an older picture in 2013, but his sign reads, relieve stress, throw change at me. And I think at the time I was like, I was just really, you know, I saw the sign and I was like, wow, like, you know, even in his low, you know, a low point, he's saying that other people can relieve stress by throwing change at him. Um, and I just thought it was very telling. And even just, you know, the area again. But yeah, that was, this was an older portion. And I, I believe I did, you know, give him change. I didn't throw it at him. So even, you know, even just thinking about the word choice as well was very interesting. Uh, this was a portrait that I took on the Metro. Um, and this was probably on my way to, to work. And I don't even know, I don't, I, I can, even thinking back at the time of me just kind of taking pictures of strangers on the train, 
Um, I don't think I would do it in this manner, but it's just, it's just uh, a portrait of, of a lady reading a newspaper. But it's also just interesting because the camera that I was using is pretty loud. So I was surprised no one it's like kind of said anything, but it's a moment. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you guys some images that I took in Ghana. So this is the uh, first time that I went to Ghana in 2015. And these are images from my series from Ghana with Love and a brief introduction. Um, yeah, like I said, I went there for the first time in 2015 and like all my life in the US, I always experienced, I experienced Ghana, but I experienced it um, from, I guess the perspective of, a, a Ghanaian American in the perspective of I, you know, I experienced Ghana in my house. I experienced it in at church. I experienced it at birthday parties, sometimes funerals. But actually going for the first time was something that was very, uh, yeah, I guess just like uplifting. Uh, it was, yeah, it was definitely like larger than life. So yeah, I can just recall myself to give you a, a, a quick. Um, overview but i recall myself you know leaving getting out of the airport seeing my father seeing my aunt and feeling like wow like okay i'm home everyone this is the this is the first time in my life that uh, everyone essentially looked like me so that was the kind of it was kind of a very um freeing moment that i never felt before so actually i felt like um i felt like static shock so one of my favorite uh, cartoon shows growing up with Static Shock. And there was an episode where Static Shock was talking to his best friend, which I can't remember his name at the moment, but his best friend was white. And Static Shock went to Ghana, Static Shock, black superhero. And he was talking to his best friend and he said, in Africa, I'm just a kid. I'm not a black kid. Is that how it feels for you all the time? And like, legit, I was like, wow, like, I feel like Static Shock. Like, it's, it's real. And also, it was just like, <laughs> it was also, it was just crazy because, um, you know, there were people who I saw that looked like a lot of my friends, my African American friends. And I'm thinking in my head, like, man, that could be their, uh, you know, extended family cousins. So it was, it was definitely a, a very charged experience because um, I was just moving. I wasn't consciously thinking about, um, just Can I ask alive. you a question real quick? Yeah. Uh, so when you went as an African American going to Ghana and seeing your family and you yeah. know more from like you know being entwined with other races and then only being like solely involved with your race in Africa, how did that affect your work coming back? Like, did you have like kind of like a great awakening? <laughs> did you know? Did it change your work? Was it the same? Like, you can talk a little more about that. Yeah, I think coming back, I realized that. I, I, I myself, as someone who's been in, who's lived in America the majority of my life, I feel like I kind of had an obligation to also show, um, to show Africa um, or the Ghana that I experienced for what it is. Because I think also like growing up, a lot of, a lot of what I've seen of like Africa myself mm -hmm. in the news was not even well yeah the news but then also just like infomercials television shows um it was pretty negative it was like you know 10 cents a day um you can help the child in need which of course there there are kids in need but that's not all africa has to offer and i think um i saw a lot of like very pure moments there which um which were just very beautiful so i felt like wow okay i took these images i have to share these with people um, in the diaspora, in America, you know, the world, wherever. So it was good. Um, so yeah, what brought me there actually was a funeral, funeral of my uncle. And uh, I never met him, but got to, got to go and um, experience that. And this first image is actually at the funeral. And I like this image a lot too, because um, in Ghanaian funerals, typically people were like black and red, but you have this kid, this baby who's wrapped around, um, I, I'm assuming his mother's back and he's wearing white. So I kind of look at it like, uh, you know, new life. And then this image right here, this is called Pretty. I took this in my dad's hometown and 
I really love this image too because uh, they're so confident. I think kids in Ghana, or not even the kids that I've experienced in Africa, um, they definitely have a lot of confidence. So he's wearing a shirt that says pretty, but he's you know rocking the shirt with such confidence, like, yeah, like that's my shirt. And then uh, also on the right, you have another kid who's, um, you know, he's putting up a sign that means something to him. I'm not particularly sh sure, but it means something to him. And he's letting that be known that, hey, if you're gonna take my picture, this is, this is I'm gonna put the sign up. So I really like this picture, pretty. And this was another image that I took around the same area of, with the two, the two kids and the friend and they were just playing in the wheelbarrow. And I just thought it was really uh, beautiful because, you know, they're playing with whatever they have and they're having a great time and that's cool. So this is with love. This is a trotro. So this is um, essentially how people get around or a, a mode of transportation in uh, Ghana, similar to maybe a dollar cab van in New York. And this next photo, this is actually me inside of a trotro, and I'm taking a photograph of um, a blind gentleman and his uh, helper on the side. And yeah, yeah, I guess more recently I realized, I heard, I found out that um, there is, apparently there's um, over a million people in Ghana who are disabled. And a lot of times they're kind of sent out to, um, like kind of be away from their family like immediately but but yeah um this is uh a photograph of that of this gentleman um this was at church for uh the funeral celebration so Ghanaian funerals are like Ghanaians love funerals they're like celebrations big celebrations of life and this was the uh, third day of the funeral I believe and this is a billboard that I shot in Ghana and uh, it's for a Guinness Black advertisement and it says Black Never Gives Up and it caught my eye because I've never seen a billboard that says something like that before. Um, so I took it. I thought it was a really great um, billboard to look at. This is a photograph of a young boy walking towards to school by himself. He's probably about, I'm, I'm gonna assume and say maybe he's like four or five, but I thought that was cool because, um, you know, he's walking by himself and which is something that you could see commonly in, in um, Africa, depending where you're at. And uh, I think it's also just that idea of community, like he's, he's good where he's at and there's, there's no, no problem. This was a photograph that I believe I took at the hip um, and I kind of re-looked at it more recently, but I like it because he's kind of flying in motion. This is a photograph that I took of a friend and his name is uh, TJ Letza and he's a photographer in, in Ghana. And at first I didn't really, I like this photograph, but I was a little bit disturbed because there's there a little bit of fog kind of around the edges. And, and that's because my film that I had used, I had accidentally put, uh, got it through the airport scanner. But looking back, I kind of enjoy it too, in a sense, because it kind of gives it a older feel, especially with what he's wearing. And this image, this is an image called uh, Ghanaian American. This is more, more recent, I shot this last year. And this was one of the ways that I kind of conjured up um, putting my identity in a photograph. So in the front, um, you have Dirk, the young man, he's wearing a do-rag, American flag do-rag, which to me kind of symbolizes uh, my experience as a black male in America. And in the back, he's wearing, uh, in the back is uh, Ankara print, um, fabric from Ghana. And that kind of simulates my, that kind of represents my Ghanaian heritage or background that's been kind of constant in my life, even before actually going to Ghana. And then the next couple of images are the actual images, or, or at least one, this is actually the image that's in uh, 
the exhibition currently. And this is different than um, work that I've ever done before. <laughs> this is called uh, D'Lo Brown versus Hulk Hogan, 2020. And uh, yeah, so this is actually from a childhood conversation which I had with my mother um, about Essentially, it was about uh, just representation in wrestling. So I was a big wrestling fan, and um, we watched wrestling essentially all the time growing up, me and my brother. And my mom had a conversation with me, and she asked me why I watched wrestling so much, because there weren't any Black people in it. And at that time, I told her there were. Like, there was D'Lo Brown, there was Mark Henry, there's a couple of different um, wrestlers. Um, so this is essentially a fantasy matchup. So you have uh, D'Lo Brown, who's wearing um, African print fabric. Um, he was in the group called the Nation of Domination. And then you have Hulk Hogan on the bottom, who is um, kind of, he, who's wearing his yellow American flag uh, shirt, and he has it ripped apart. Um, but yeah, I think I kind of look at this as... Um, a representation of just like maybe a better tomorrow but this is also <laughs> but this is also a uh, kind of just a concept piece that I'm still working out um yeah so I've been kind of making work around um the events that are occurring right now in the world kind of just thinking about that and thinking you know because all of my work is primarily in Africa but I'm from I've, I've lived in the U.S. for years how can I how can I um, make art that kind of um, talks about today's political climate? And this is kind of the same picture, but it has uh, myself here, a younger version of myself in the background. This, uh, this is called, again, this is kind of all related to what's going on in the world today to an extent. And I call this one uh, what's the world we live in. And in this one, um, I have Dakari. So he's actually, he's a 13 year old kid. It's one of my good friends, uh, little brother. And he actually kind of set up the stage, but it was interesting because I was talking to him a bit about just like how he felt about everything going on in the world right now. And this is actually straight from, I guess, through the eyes of a young man. This um, <laughs> this is pretty much um, also a concept piece, but I'm using action figures um, to essentially display um, you know, some of the moments that are happening today in, in the United States again. So in this, these two pieces, these are actually both wrestlers that wrestled in WWE. But again, it's a concept, so um, working around it. I have a question now. What is the go back to the last? Um, so, That's what is right. the, uh, can you elaborate a little more on the importance of like your younger self? Because you talked about you know you watching wrestling, and yeah. what is the connection between using these figures that you you know and love from like an early childhood? It's not using uh -huh. them as an adult to like kind of convey like what's going on today. I thought that was very interesting to see that you know. Uh, can you talk a little more about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, I think like <laughs> since I've I've been doing this project, now I've been thinking about um, I've been I've been looking back at wrestlers, like wrestlers that I really loved, um, and seeing that some of them had a very bad, like in some cases, like a racist past. I'm like, wow, like you know, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, but also with the with me kind of inserting my childhood, um, I also look at this also, it could be representative of any child, any young child. I'm also thinking about, you know, what are what are the youth thinking, you know, when they see all these images on TV, when they see, uh, you know, when they see the process going on, you know, what's going on to the psyche of a, a young child also. So, um, I mean, it's, I think it's also we're at a time too where you can't really ignore what's going on. Like, and yeah, I mean, so I try to just put this all <laughs> through the art. I've never really been a person who's like 
just even like super vocal, but I realized that I, I do have an, an eye for stuff and I can, I'm starting to also conceptualize things more recently. So yeah, I think, I think that'd be the answer for that. And I'm gonna go to the next piece. And this again is with uh, Dakari. And yeah, on the left here, we have, um, again, it's kind of similar to um, a piece before, but let's call this a tag team matchup in a sense. Um, and you have Mark Henry kind of running away. And this is, again, this is actually a little bit, these are, this is a different um, lane of the work that I've done previously, but um, I feel like I have to, as an artist, it's kind of my obligation to, to, yeah, show like what's in my mind and, and, and how I could, um, yeah, put this out there. So have that piece and um, we have a piece on the right, which is a leg drop and the piece in the middle is, I call this one uh, Made in America. And, and it's all kind of, I mean, you could say it's up to interpretation, um, but I guess some things that I would say to glance at in these pieces is, uh, if you notice the ring is actually red, black, and green, which um, is pretty much symbolic of the Pan-African colors. So also I'm thinking, I'm also thinking about uh, America and how it's um, been built um, essentially from, or, or built <laughs> with the help of, you know, black people dating fairly like, you know, back and uh, what that means. So, yeah. All right, these, um, I think I might have, I meant to put this in the other slide, but these are some uh, portraits that I took in Ghana again. So we're, we're gonna go back to, I guess, the work in Ghana. Unless you had any questions related again to the past. Are we good? All right. All right, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, again, this is this was also taken my very first time in uh, Ghana in 2015, but these are all taken on my iPhone. You took it on the iPhone. That's pretty impressive. I uh, pre appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are, the, I think these are the only iPhone pictures I have on this slide, but yeah. All right, next. Um, this is a portrait of a dear friend. His name is Abdullah. And he's from Sierra Leone, so I'm going to start showing you guys some images from Sierra Leone. But um, quickly, I'm going to tell you about Abdullah's story. So I used to work in, uh, in George Mason in IT, and my friend Abdullah, uh, he was also interning there at the time, and we used to work across from each other. And he had told me, um, or he invited me rather, to Sierra Leone to go there because he had a, a nonprofit. And... It wasn't until I actually um, looked on the website of his uh, nonprofit website that I got to know his story. So essentially, Abdullah, um, he lived in Sierra Leone. You know, he, that's where he grew up. And Sierra Leone, they had a war. I want to say it was from 1990 to uh, 2000, around that, around that range. But him and his uh, mother actually lived in the jungle for seven years during that war. Um, hiding from the rebels. And eventually he was a, he ended up being a street kid. He was living on the street for some time. And uh, he then got founded by uh, people at the CRC, which is the Christian, um, or the Children Rescue Center in, uh, Bo, in Bo Sierra Leone, which is the second largest city. And um, he ended up growing up there. And then later he then went back to his village, which, um, he grew up in and he found out that his mom passed away in the war and he went to his village he fell asleep and he had a dream like this is actually all a real story it's kind of crazy but yeah he had a dream to help uh africa or or even first to help his village and the rest of africa so he came out with a nonprofit called young vision africa and that's what led me to uh sierra leone so pretty much i guess in most of my photography it's i'm kind of just following life as it goes. Um, so yeah, this is a portrait of him and his wife in, uh, in New York. Okay, so this is, these are portraits from Sierra Leone, 2016 to 2017 from a series called Land That We Love. And um, 
I really, I really love this portrait on the left. Um, I think they're just kind of oozing with just sauce, or swag. Um, yeah, and then on the right, you have uh, them again, but um, they're, it's perfectly aligned. So I named this one perfect. And I didn't really notice that until I took the photograph that his knee is perfectly aligned with the back of him as well. And um, also even thinking about the stripes, the Adidas stripes, and then the shirt, how that happens to match up as well. Uh, these are two portraits that I took in the village that Abdullah lives in as well. And I just liked it because they were wearing um, essentially luxury brands that we're kind of familiar with in America. And even though they may be possibly uh, not authentic, but I, th I thought it looks pretty cool. All right, so this right here, um, this is a photograph that was taken at uh, Abdullah. So also, there is also, uh, in, in Abdullah's village, there's also a, um, a maternity center, which is named after his mom, and it's called the Femada Maternity Center. So this was a portrait of a lady and her child outside the maternity center. And then this, hopefully this works, I'm gonna click it, it's a video, and it's a video of all the ladies, oops, a video of all the ladies at the maternity center. <laughs> Yeah, so those are all the babies that were born at the Famada Maternity Center named after Abdullah's mom. Uh, this was a portrait that I took on the way, um, just like on the trail of two, du three, two dudes in a, in a helmet and uh, one guy in the middle. I just thought it was cool. It was kind of like a sandwich. Um, the portrait on the right, the portraits on the right, um, these were a group of kids. Uh, when we first got to Abdullah's village, they gave us a big celebration, essentially. So um, that's like post-celebration. This is a portrait with um, Philip, who's also working with the organization, and then uh, Chelsea. And Philip was offering her uh, termites. He's offering her ter like termites or bugs, essentially. And that was kind of the reaction. I also didn't eat the bugs or termites, but yeah, I just, I just kind of captured this moment. Uh, this is not a portrait that I took, but it's rather just, oh, actually, let me go back to this. So also, <laughs> um, Chelsea, uh, that's her name. She also has a child named after um, in the village called Baby Chelsea. So when I uh, first went there, when I, when I, yeah, I think it was like the first night I was in Sierra Leone, there was, I was asleep, I was asleep outside and I heard like the loudest screams ever, like as if like somebody was getting murdered, but it was actually a lady giving birth right next to me and the baby that came out, they actually named her after. Her. And then fast forward, um, this is me and uh, baby Lloyd. So there's also a baby named after me in Sierra Leone. And uh, this is just like the text message exchange with uh, Abu, who's also an organization. So you have um, on the bottom, you have uh, yeah, yeah, Baby Lloyd, me, James, that's like my little bro, that's uh, Sadu up there, who's the father of Baby Lloyd and then his wife. And I don't know if everyone had some time to read that, but that was like my live um, moment yeah. This is, uh, this was also, this was, so this was, these were taken in the city in Bo, uh, which where Abdullah grew up once he, uh, yeah, once he came into the child rescue center. But yeah, these are in Bo, uh, which is the second largest city. And I took some portraits at Ben Matt School, which was a school that we were working with. And you have the image on the left, this is called Locked, and the image on the right is called, uh, this is Otto. I like Otto, he has like snot on his nose, he's a kid, and he's just, you know, he's just being a kid. And then uh, this is 
uh, one of my mixed media pieces that I had in my solo show um, about three years ago at Hillier Art Space. And this was something that I conceived from my photograph with Otto. Um, and I named this one King Otto. And you have flowers. You also have a Sierra Leonean flag. And this is actually a collaboration that I did with an artist, uh, BK Adams. Okay, this is also at the school. Um, ben Matt, this is Catherine. Took this from the outside. This is um, these two right here. This is Abdul and Robert Williams. And uh, this is a portrait of them too, followed by a note that they sent me. Very nice, just really honest, great children. So I'm just, I'll just read this for everyone real quick. So they say, dear sir, how are you doing? I hope you are fine. Our main reason of writing you this letter is to tell you that we want you for friend because you are so nice. And they, were, they wrote nice with the S instead of a, a C. Very just honest, cute. You are so nice to people. You have a good and clean heart. I can't even read it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. This is so random. Like, I don't even know why I'm tearing up at the artist. Uh, deep <laughs> breath. Deep breath. <laughs> oh, Take your time. Yeah, but... <laughs> We wish you good reply to us, but may God bless you. Yes, you are. You are so effective. I'm just going to the next slide. This is crazy. Yeah. Hey, we're but, <laughs> it's real. Like, this is real life. So. Uh, yeah, so. All right. Yeah, so these are two kids also. Um, Lady Brick and Josephine, they're like good friends. <laughs> it's just taken at the school. Also taking it to school. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's also taking it to school again. Uh, this was like maybe outside of or after, yeah, after, um, I would say like a lunch break or around that time, but yeah, these are uh, kids, kids. So yeah, the, uh, the piece on the right, I named it School Days, and this is just them outside school. This is, um, this was at the Sewer River. And 
Yeah, Super River. So um, these kids on the bottom left, they're actually from uh, Guinea. From I, I believe they're, I guess, the, I don't say if the correct term is refugees, but they were living in Guinea and uh, they moved to Sierra Leone and they're actually washing clothes. And this is a portrait that I took of them. I talked to them for a little bit. And on the right, um, this is a time I was, I was using Snapchat a lot. And um, we, we kind of use the face filter. <laughs> so like, that's like my face on him, but like, yeah. <laughs> All right, so transition. These are in, in Ghana. Um, yeah, it's just a nice, um, which I'm assuming is like a father-mother moment. Uh, this was another portrait or a street shot that I took. And yeah, I like this one a lot because of uh, all the, I guess the American symbolism. So he's wearing uh, Jordan sandals and he has his hand on his, um, I'm assuming it's his son or maybe it's his grandson. And then he also had the Texas hat. This you know, it's a, very interesting to see like, you know, like little things like the Jordan sandals. Yeah. You were using Snapchat. And these are things they might not have access to. Or like I saw earlier the, um, the Chanel shirt. Another guy had the Versace shirt on. It just yeah. see these signs and symbols that we kind of see in like, not only the African American community as a sign of wealth, but like American culture in general, and then seeing it translate to these people, you know, uh, how did that affect you seeing that? Like, like, can you talk about a little more your experience of seeing those kind of signs and symbols that are here in America transferred to there? Like, I mean, I think like it was just an. I think it was like a nice. It was just a cool thing to see. Um, Cause I think also a lot of more than likely, at least, or not, let me not say more than likely, but I do know when we went to that, uh, <clears throat> that village or we went to the town that my friends from, um, we, we did like a clothing drive essentially, where we like handed out clothes. So, um, I think some of it's just like at whim, like they're receiving it or it could have been also that they may, might've got it at the market, but I don't think I don't even think the kid knew like what he was wearing per se. I think it was just like, all right, I'm I'm gonna clothe myself. But uh and even I think, yeah, I kinda feel like that with um a lot of this too. Um it depends. I mean there are people, um, especially like in the cities who um are cautious of or aware that like these are like American brands, so they may actually buy it with that purpose as well. And this is it's a shot at the market. I think these next ones are going to be in Tema in Ghana. Yeah, so this is in Tema. And uh, the one on the left, that's a friend of mine. Who's a, he's a music artist. Uh, his name is Kwesi Arthur in Ghana. And this was taken around his hometown in Tema. And this is, like, not too far away on the right. This is... Uh, also, like, I guess, like, his neighbor. But it's I really like this photograph, too, because they're all kind of just in their own world. They're all doing something. So, yeah, you have, like, the baby kind of, like, crying. And then you have the girl putting up the peace sign. And then you have a uh, young boy with, the, like, smiling with the cell phone. This is also in some of... Um, this is like in passing. I think I took both of these like at the hip early, like not really. Um, yeah. And then here you have uh, Kwesi on the bottom left with some youth in Ghana. And then also you have um, another friend of mine. His name's Joey. And he's a like a designer in, in Ghana. And He's also with some youth as well in Tema. Uh, this right here, this is a portrait, or the this is kind of follows up with the next photograph I'm going to show. But this is a 
portrait that's was inspired a bit by I would say Malik Sadiba. Um, if I hope I said his name, his last name right, but uh, yeah, he uh, I saw in one of his books that he, I had of his that he held uh, like they held uh, backdrops essentially, um, or they held uh, cloth as backdrops, um, but. I use these two children who are actually uh, cousins of Kwesi and uh, I use them as the holders of the backdrops. So this is the next photograph. And we took this outside of his family house again. And I like their poses. Um, it's just, you know, confidence, chill. And I call this one Breathe Eat. All right, so these these upcoming images that I'm gonna show you, these are actually taken at, um, again, a funeral, black and, black and red. This is the funeral of my aunt. Her name was uh, Nana Coco Dalmansa, and she was the queen mother of uh, our town in Kukurutumi, so she was like an actual queen. And I've been, um, yeah, it was privileged to meet her um, the first time I went to Ghana, and then the second time, and then the third time um, at her funeral. But at each time I met her, it's, it was, you know, it was always love. And um, I mean, and I, know, I knew her, uh, her, my cousins essentially as well, like through her, but I met her for the first time in Ghana. And this is uh, outside of her celebration. Like I was saying, Ghanaian celebrations are like very um, in-depth. This is like a, a week long celebration. Uh, on the left, you have the umbrella, you know, for the celebration. On the right, you have uh, people who are essentially, um, you know, observing the body. Here you have the chief. Yeah, this is the chief of the area. So I had a, a quick question, another question for you. Um... Yeah. Who thinks you, um, like I saw you were very emotionally connected to that letter and you're emotionally connected to a lot of these photographs. You know, I think that goes to say like the power of art and like the artist. I know my work, I'm definitely connected to a lot of things I talk about in my work. So could you talk about like, I don't know, you don't have to if you don't want to talk about the letter. I know it's very emotional to you, but like, what's your connection with these people, the places, the letter, like all these things, like, like talk about like how it makes you feel. What are you trying to convey? Yeah, um, I'll get back to that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll get back to it, but definitely appreciate it. Sorry, bro. <laughs> no, you good, you good, you good. All right. And uh, yeah, this is also at her funeral. And uh, yeah, this is like outside. Um, they're like the celebration area, not celebration, but um, we were like, we were just like eating. It's actually near the family house. So you actually see her image in the background, background there. And uh, this is my little cousin, Danielle. And like I was saying, everyone wears like black and red, uh, um, essentially at the funerals, but you have her in the purple. And then I like the image on the left as well, because uh, it's <laughs> kind of represents, it's, this was taken at the hotel we were staying at, and this is on the bed sheet, and it says stolen from RBH, Akim Tafo, which is the area, Akim Tafo, and uh, RBH is a Royal Blemish Hotel, so it's kind of like, and it's also on the pillow, so it's kind of like, all right, if you take this, we you know you stole it from here, but it just kind of lets you know where you're at also. Uh, this is a lot of energy, but I'm I'm showing it to you guys. So this is uh <laughs> my aunt, um it's queen. Um so yeah, she's in a gold bed, a gold umbrella, uh you have the swords, and yes, this is a queen. So yeah, a lot of energy. All right, these next couple of posts are from uh, 33. This is a project that I did in DC with uh, Kayvon Rafer. 
and uh, also David Ross. And yeah, this is a uh, 33 is based on a game that's very important to people in, in the DC area. And uh, I guess the essentially the the goal of 33 is to play to get yeah, 33 points. And people play by different rules in different areas. This is a portrait that I took outside of the Seven Street Courts. I also did like, I kind of emulated this from an uh, image that I took in Sierra Leone with two kids who also, like two younger kids followed by an older kid. This is taken at the courts. This is also taken the course, courts. Um, a lot of kids kind of riding around with their bikes. Uh, father, son portrait. Another portrait. Um, yeah, the photograph on the right, especially. Uh, I know my friend, I know Kayvon really loves that one as well, because, like, kind of reminds you of just, like, being a kid and, and just hanging out. These are some images that we took for, like, promotional not promotional, but like, yeah, for like the cover essentially. Um, and you have father and father and son helping him with the hoop. And then that's Jay, he was uh, the cover, the person who was on the cover. And uh, yeah, so when I went to Ghana, I also redid some images as well, or I shot some Ghanaian basketball players. So I guess the interesting thing about 33 is like from actually me showing the trailer online there were there was actually a kid in ghana who reached out to me and was like hey man this this uh this documentary like really inspired me i'm gonna start playing to 33 points instead of 21. um so i met up with him he's actually the kid on the left his name is uh dairo and i recreated a basketball portrait uh, with Manute Bowl and Muggsy Bogues. And this is another portrait that I took and I kind of recreated that again, um, but these are with two twins. We recreated the cover that I did on the right. These are taken in uh, Tanzania. So earlier this year, I went to Tanzania. Um, my partner at the time, she was living there. She was doing a, a program through Princeton in Africa. And yeah, I just went there to see her. And um, she was also working with kids um, K through 12. And uh, that was cool. That was the first time I was on the east, the east side of Africa. And uh, got to see her relationship with the kids as well. And um, it, was, it was cool, a lot of love. Uh, this is a portrait I took there. Um, I like her, kind of like her pose there. This is a portrait I took of a group of girls. I was just kind of I think I was just sitting down at the moment and they walked by and maybe I had my camera out, took a nice portrait of them. Uh, this is Nella and Agnes together. Um, this is, I would say this is representative of um, just like sisterly love, you know, big sis, little sis, that type of energy. Uh, this is a series that I did when I was there as well with the girls. So she was actually working um, very closely with uh, our girls home, our orphanage. And I uh, wanted to do a project with them. So 
I did this with Kangas, which is uh, yeah, fabric that's kind of native to Tanzania and Kenya. And they all picked out their own like individual Kangas. I bought I bought a couple, I bought a bunch um, at the market. This is taken in Ghana. This is also a little bit more recent. Um, and this is, yeah, this was taken at my friend's house. And uh, I guess this kid is a descendant of royalty. So he has, yeah, <laughs> they had it at the house, but uh, he has his like king hat on a crown um, and then a sword. Uh, this is a portrait called Ghana Babies. I took this in 2016. And this was in Accra and these are two sisters. Um, it just so happened that everything kind of matched up. They're, they're what they're wearing, the pink, um, pink dress with the green shirt and then even the background. And this one, this is a, por a portrait I took last year called uh, Queen Energy. And I just like, I like this one a lot. I think she's, um, again, exudes a lot of confidence. And um, yeah, you know, she's a young girl, young lady, but she's also wearing a football shirt as well. Yeah, this was taken recently in uh, in Ghana. Kids running in the wind. <laughs> yeah, kids running in the wind, just having fun, feeling free. Yeah. This is a portrait took also in Macaulay Market with a friend. And uh, we used a uh, poly sack back, back as a uh, backdrop. So something a little bit, a little bit different. Something that's like normally used to put things in. We just use it as a backdrop. And then you also see the Jinome symbol, a Dinkra symbol as well. And I think this might be the last slide, maybe. But this is a uh, a recent sculpture that I did. Um, yeah, recent sculpture that I did is currently at uh, eighty WSE in uh, in New York, and I, I just kind of had this idea that I wanted to um, make some, I guess, make some work or make sculptures to kind of remember some people that I came in contact with that I can't, uh, I don't really see anymore i can't I, there's really no way to <laughs> contact them anymore but this is uh i call this one say a prayer for sal and um it's made by with uh pigment print print um styrofoam backing there's a wood at the top and then also you have um support sapor which is like a sapor sponge and it's draped in front so sapor sponge is essentially like an african bath sponge um and this is an aerial sculpture. I hope to do a whole bunch, a whole lot more of them. And yeah, that was actually the last slide, but I'm, I'm ready for any questions now too. I don't think I can hear you. I think you're muted. All right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so if anyone has questions to ask yeah. Lord, um, Yes, I do. Type it in the Q&A section. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't see it as a Q&A yeah, Q section. Um, okay. We have, we have uh, one question, it says, uh, from Rosie S, uh, do you mostly use a film camera? Uh, yeah, mostly. Um, I would say about 2013, yeah, that's when I started using a film camera. And uh, I use that for all of my uh, personal work. So, yeah. Um, most of those portraits, the 35 millimeters um, portraits, those are taken with the Leica uh, M6. But the earlier, the early, earlier work that was kind of take, I think some of those are taken with like a Canon AE1. Mm -hmm. And I also use um, the, the six by six portraits where we're at the Hasselblad, the square images. Uh, Rosie S also asks, 
How do you approach people to ask for their portraits? Um, just, I just kind of, I just ask them, um, in this, I guess, in the simplest way. But, uh, but sometimes, um, I mean, depending like where I'm at, I may have someone else ask on my be but behalf. Like depending, I mean, like for example, in uh, for example, in like Tanzania, I don't I don't speak Swahili, but uh, my partner she spoke Swahili or she speaks Swahili, so she asked um, a couple times like on my behalf. But um, the majority of the times, I just kind of just ask people. Well, I got you know I got some questions. Uh, I yeah. wanted to get to the end to ask you more questions because I didn't want to like you know go back and forth. Wanted you to get you know uh, say what you had to say. Uh, what inspires you like the most as an artist? Mm, I would just say, um, I mean, I'm inspired by just life, like world events. But um, I think I recent I realized more recently that I'm inspired by like. Um, I, I was gonna say events from my like childhood. Like everything, kind of is um, is kind of goes back to that in one way or another. But um, I think I'm also inspired when I travel, um, just like recovering um, and, and finding out things about like the world and um, like culture, heritage, things of that nature. Um, but there's there's a lot of things that kind of inspire me at different points and people as well. Is there like an element of your work that you like to uh, in involve yourself with the most? Um, the element of my work that I'd like to? Um, like as far as the the new work or like what are you, you saying? New, old? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I've been honestly the past year. I've been uh, I've been drawing a lot. I've been drawing a lot more than I've been uh, probably photographing, but I just haven't really felt like it's ready enough to show people. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I just want to um, do a lot more. Um, just kind of just take the art, like take my photographs uh, past just photographs, because I feel like I. I feel like I know how to take a a decent photograph, but so now I'm just trying to um, also branch out and and get a little bit more experimental in different ways. Like with like different kind of media and you know, uh, kind of like yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, even I had an I ha I was supposed to put on this live, but I had another piece that I uh, I did with um, yeah, like mixed media essentially mixed media like pastel oil pastels yeah so just like and then we got two more questions uh let's see uh I'm trying to see answer live i guess I'm watching the q a um how has your focus changed since you spend time in africa if you want to ask uh, my focus, um, yeah, I went there for the first time five years ago, um, but I think, yeah, uh, yeah, honestly, yeah, once I went to Africa in 2015, um, I kind of primarily would just shoot there, like, I, I would, you know, I would work here uh, in the States sometimes, and I would, like, maybe shoot some stuff for leisure occasionally, but, um, I wasn't. I was. I, I feel like I'm. I'm more. I'm most inspired there, honestly, because um, I feel like it's also me, kind of. Uh, kind of like a lot of things are being revealed for, revealed to me. Um, like when I first went there uh, in 2015, like it, everything felt like I was there for 10 days, but it felt a lot longer. It felt like I was there for a month because like it was it was new to me. So. Um, I'm still just like uncovering and finding stuff out um, daily. Um, well, not daily, but when I'm over there. So, yeah, hopefully that answered it. Okay, another question. A lot of the photos, a lot of the photos were of children in childhood. Is there anything about childhood that draws you into photographing it? Um, I think kids are just very honest. 
um, yeah, very honest. And I think also, um, oh yeah, I mean, I think kids are very honest. Um, and I think also um, thinking about, you know, going to places, going to museums, I think it'd be really, it's really, uh, it'd be really dope if, uh, you know, I would, if kids, you know, in Africa and also the, the diaspora, if they're able to see themselves and some of the artworks that's like plastered on the wall too. So I think, I feel like I'm trying to, uh, yeah, work towards that, um, you know, just representation um, of children properly. Because I think also, you know, images, uh, how I was, I was talking about earlier um, with like seeing the 10 cents a day and like all that type of stuff, like all those things could have an effect or on perception as far as like what someone perceives with the world. Um, and yeah, so I would say that. I got um, two more questions actually from Sarah Gordon, one of the panelists. Uh, what, um, how do you decide on photographs shot in black and white and color or color? Um, it, it, it depends. Um, I think I was, I used to shoot a lot more black and white like in earlier years, but I think it's more recent I've been kind of experimenting with color, but also it's just like what I have available. Um, like I was probably just buy a lot of film and shoot a certain type of film at a certain time. Um, but I think yeah, during the period when I was in Sierra Leone, I think I came there with just black and white film. And that's why like a majority of those were black and white. Um, so it's, yeah, for myself personally, it's just kind of, uh, it's kind of random, honestly. But I think also my black and white pictures, sometimes, like, depending what I'm shooting, is a little bit more uh, striking. I got, I think I got two more questions. Um, have you noticed different lighting quality in D.C. versus Ghana? Do you find different lighting quality in D.C. than that of Ghana? Yeah, I think I think it's definitely warmer in just Africa in general, especially like Sierra Leone with the kids. Mm -hmm. um, the portraits that I took of them in like the school uniforms, that light was just very warm. Um, yeah, it's very warm. I think, I guess the sun in DC is, maybe it's a little bit more harsh, um, but yeah, it's, it's overall. Um, <laughs> I think the the sun is just it's just warmer, so you get those um just warmer images. All right. But, yeah. Got one more question. How um how was working on the thirty um uh, thirty three film? Were you a director of photography? Uh is there a place it's streaming? Yeah, that was really great. It was a great um project. We probably took us about I think a year to complete, even though it was just five minutes. Um, it's not streaming at the moment, but uh, yeah, we're still just, we, we streamed it uh, maybe earlier in March for about 33 hours, but um, yeah, I mean, you could uh, like reach out to me and try to uh, see if you could, you'd be able to you know, find a way for you to watch it. Um, but yeah, uh, I wasn't a director of photography. I, I was, well, I, I was like, yeah, I was, I wouldn't say I was a director of photography. I, uh, I was a director and um, of like the, a co-director and I also um, shot the stills in it. Um, so this, my stills were featured in the like beginning and the end of the film. All right, we got another question from Tracy Todd. There are several stories you told about your time in Africa. Uh, do you see a future where you would complete a documentary in Africa as well? Uh, yeah, I want to, I want to actually, I already have a documentary um, in mind, but I actually want to do that in, um, in Ghana and also New York. That's kind of what I, what I have in mind at the moment, but definitely, um, yeah, definitely want to work towards filming more in Africa in general. Um, I did, I didn't show it on the slideshows, but I did, I did some work. Uh, I've done a lot, there's a lot of, there's some video work on my website, um, but they're 
commercials, like short commercials that I did of um, of products in Africa that I found at the market. Um, so you can check that out on my site and like lloydfoster.com. And uh, but yeah, I definitely hope to. I did in the chat so people uh, think if you type in the chat, they can, like it creates a hyperlink. They can just, oh oh sweet oh okay. Then everybody can go uh, see that. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Do you also have the documentary website? No, I don't have it on the website. Um, the thing is, yeah, I don't have it on the website, but I could. Um, actually, I think my co-director might have it on his website. Actually, you know what? I'll supply the documentary today. I mean. <laughs> For I could I could probably do that. Um, let me see. I think it's I think it's on my co-director's website, David Ross. But I'm not sure. It's okay if you can. Play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if anything, if anyone wants to just email me and I could um, arrange to get that for you to check out. Uh, does anyone have any more questions? Um, we're gonna start wrapping it up. Uh, Sarah, do you have any more closing remarks? I just wanna thank you again on behalf of the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. Thanks to Emmanuel and Lloyd. This was such a thorough and fascinating and really moving um, discussion of your work. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, yeah, I enjoyed it being a part of this. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you, guys, uh, for coming to the uh, talk. Um, I'm happy to have Lloyd in the uh, exhibition. And if uh, you guys didn't check out the online exhibition, it's a beautiful exhibition with a lot of uh, amazing artists. Uh, check it out, um, www.throughouraisexhibition.com. Also, too, we're uh, sending people free exhibition posters. So, uh, you know, just go, when you go to the website, you can uh, see it says free exhibit poster, put your information in there and uh, we'll be sending you a free poster. So, yeah. Thank you everybody for coming. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lord. All right. All right, bye. Bye.